Hello, anatomy colleagues. This is Dr. Alsup, and we will be reviewing the pertinent nerves for the pterygopalatine fossa and palate session. And there are really quite a few, but the, uh, the majority of these will be branches of the maxillary nerve, or V2. But let's start our conversations on those that are not branches of V2. Starting with a quick review here of the location of the bulk of the mandibular nerve, or V3, which is basically here and you can see the expanse of the branches of V3. We know that the mandibular nerve will exit the skull via the foramen ovale, and that is what we're seeing right here, is about where it exits. It's a large nerve, um, and you can have a nice view of the posterior division and its anterior divisions there. And just note that this nerve will send a branch to the tensorvelli palatini, which is typically coming off the nerve to the medial pterygoid, so that is a branch of V3. We also need to review the glossopharyngeal nerve, which, as we know, plays a major role in terms of afferent innervation to both the oro and the laryngopharynx, as well as efferent innervation to the stylopharyngeus. But don't forget that it will also provide general and taste sensation to the posterior tongue. And um, so let's locate it right here. It's going to be this nerve right in this region. And, <clears throat> excuse me, you can see that it's going to be just inferior to the tonsillar fossa region between the palatoglossal and the palatopharyngeus arches, or palatopharyngeal arches in this region right here is the tonsillar fossa. You can see a bit of the tonsillar tissue. And so this, any type of surgery that occurs in the tonsillar region or the palatine tonsillar region really needs to consider this close inferior relationship of the glossopharyngeal nerve. All right, one of my all-time favorites is the pterygopalatine ganglion. And so that is going to be located in this general region right here. You can see where it gets a little bit larger, more circular right there. This is the largest peripheral parasympathetic ganglion, and it's located medial and inferior to the bulk of V2. And because of its close relationship to V2, many of the branches of the maxillary nerve will travel through this ganglion without synapsing, because only preganglionic parasympathetic fibers originating from the facial nerve through the branch of the greater petrosal nerve will synapse here. And that greater petrosal nerve will join with the deep petrosal nerve, which contains postganglionic sympathetic fibers, to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal, which you can see here. It's hard to differentiate between the artery. Just know that that artery and nerve travel in this general region. And the nerve of the, pterygo uh, of the pterygoid canal will enter the pterygopalatine ganglion posteriorly, as you can see it doing here. So it is here that those preganglionic parasympathetic fibers will synapse. And so that's key. Only those preganglionics will synapse there. You may have many other fibers traveling through this region that do not synapse. All right, let's turn our attentions to the branches of the maxillary nerve, or V2. And why not start with the big one, the infraorbital nerve. The infraorbital nerve, which you can see here, in the floor of the orbit uh, before it's entering the infraorbital canal where it will give off some alveolar branches. And you can also see it kind of all over the place, all its branches exiting through the infraorbital foramen. The infraorbital nerve is, a, is the terminal branch of V2 and it's typically the largest branch. Let's work through the V2 branches that will afferently serve the teeth. And in order to understand which one is which, making sure you understand what is anterior and what is posterior is important. So it's going to be anterior here towards the incisors and the nose, and then this will be more posterior towards the molars and the ear region. So it kind of helps in terms of being able to understand which branches go where. The posterior superior alveolar branch, so the P, uh, PS, a, excuse me, it's going to be more in this direction and it's heading towards the molars, which you can see here. 
the posterior superior alveolar branch is a direct branch of V2. Both the middle and the anterior superior alveolar branches are typically branches of the infraorbital nerve, and sometimes the middle branches are missing. These closer to the premolars are going to be MSA branches, or middle superior alveolar. And then the ones that are heading towards more towards the incisors, as well as the canine, will be the ASA, or the anterior superior alveolar branch. Now this whole region here, you can see that the, the nerve branches become increasingly smaller, and they kind of spread out in a larger area. Actually, it would extend this way as well. This will be the superior dental plexus. So these are the small branches that are directly associated uh, with those uh, the, the teeth in terms of the afferent innervation. So these are just smaller branches of these nerves that we just talked about here. All right, let's head towards the palate region. And we're having so much fun, I can hear that my computer is just getting hot and excited to talk about this. So I'm sorry if there's some background noise. All right, the hard palate is going to be afferently innervated by the greater palatine nerve, so the GP, more posteriorly. Um, it's going to enter the region through the greater palatine foramen, and it will be afferent, or it will be afferently innervated in the more anterior portions by the nasopalatine nerve, which will enter into this region or it'll traverse this region via the incisive foramen. The lesser palatine nerve will afferently serve the soft palate, and these are easiest to locate from the soft palate region uh, heading towards the lesser palatine foramina, which will be right in this region. There's usually multiple lesser palatine foramina. So this, these particular nerves um, will be lesser palatine. So you'll have arteries as well for, for these that are going to travel with the nerves. So it's sometimes difficult to distinguish between the arteries and the nerves. Just focus on understanding uh, what neurovasculature is right there, because in terms of a practical setting, we typically don't ask to differentiate between the arteries and nerves. Last but not least, there are some V2 branches that innervate the lateral nasal wall region, which we are looking at here. You can see here is going to be the posterior inferior nasal nerve branches right around this region. Uh, these are, uh, and they're near these uh, arterial branches of the sphenopalatine. The posterior inferior nasal branches are branches of the greater palatine nerve, which comes off, these particular nerve branches come off within the greater palatine canal and then head to the nasal wall. And then up here we have posterior superior lateral nasal branches, which are direct branches from V2. And these will innervate Por, uh, the posterior portions of the lateral nasal wall and superior middle nasal concha. All right, so that wraps up our coverage of the nerves of this session. Please take time to review your understanding of the location of these structures, and always please feel free to reach out to me or any of my anatomy colleagues with questions. Thank you for your time and attention.